Welcome back. Uh, we're finally getting some sun. We're getting some nice dry weather. So we are prepping to get everything planted in the ground. Um, I mean, we got the fertilizer buggy, which we spread last night. So that's gonna go back to the co-op. Uh, we also got the hay bine because we have some waterways that once we get stuff planted, we're not gonna have access to. So we're gonna go ahead and get those cut real quick. We'll only get a couple bales. That's a couple bales we didn't have. And then over there, we have the tractor hooked up to the disc. Um, yesterday, I got in town probably about four or five o'clock-ish. Um, Juliana picked up the fertilizer. She went in town early. I got in, spread the fertilizer out and started getting everything dissed because it's a little wet still. So this is gonna hopefully get the ground opened up. We are going to get some a little quicker dry, um, but it was about 11.30 and I was cold and I had most of it done. So went ahead and just stopped there. We'll get the rest of it dissed up today. And hopefully by Sunday afternoon, maybe Monday, we will get everything in the ground. So just quick over, overview of how these fertilizer buggies work. Um, you have a PTO and hydraulic up in the front. You have obviously your flotation wheels and your hopper. So they fill it in there. Um, and then for this particular one, it has a lever here, which you would unsnap and put up there. And that's gonna drop this chain. And it's gonna run on that sprocket down there on the axle. What that's gonna do is, as it runs, it'll spin that guy. So those lobes will catch, it'll spin here. Well, I can go that way. Um, and then it will drive that belt. Also, it's got, for the hydraulics, this pin right here that will move back and forth based off of your hydraulics that you control. And it'll either stop it from going anywhere, so it'll just roll off, or it'll allow that belt to move. So if you're going over something, waterway, through a ditch, anything that, through different field, you'll stop that, it'll stop your belt from going, and it will stop spreading. Your PTO is hooked up to run your spreaders. This particular one is a 40 foot spread. So you get 20 foot on each side and you just kind of pick your line and go back and forth and you spread your fertilizer. We did roughly 200 pounds an acre total. Um, that's with our sulfur, with our map and with our um, potash. This time we're actually going diagonal with what the rows of um, corn was and I'll kind of show you the difference. So this is where we ended off yesterday. You can see the darker stuff over here is the wetter stuff that we turned up. This is the drier stuff which we haven't. As you can kind of see there's pressure right over there. There's quite a bit more stocks that are standing up. Um, it doesn't look like a field that has just been harvested. Um, and then if you look over there, it's a lot flatter. Um, you don't have those stocks standing up. So that's the advantage of going crossways. Um, however, the last time I was just trying to get 
the field to dry up and hopefully get some beans in the ground. I was actually going to just drive in between the rows. I was going to try to go for a 30 inch split um, since they would have been early. They should have been canopied well enough, um, but that didn't happen. So we're, we're sitting at oh, end of first week in May. So we're going to go ahead and do 15 inch rows. So I want um, all these stocks down so I don't have to deal with stocks plugging up any other rows as I go through them. Um, what I'm going to do for my 15 inch rows is I'm actually going to plant the whole field. And I'm going to turn around and I'm going to run in between all my 30 inch rows. That is going to give me 15 ish. I might be a little close on one side, a little far on the other, but at least I'll be a lot closer. And at the end of the day, if I end up running over the same row, I just made that a 30 inch row instead of a 15. Um, so there's no, the biggest disadvantage is going to be time and the fuel that it takes me to do it. Um, instead of it being four or five hours for me to get this field done, it's probably going to be an all day event. Um, depending on when I get started will depend on if it takes a second day or not. So that's where we're at. Um, what we have left is this little bit over here. And then I have a little bit kind of right behind those trees to finish up. I just kind of split this way and I was running back and forth. By the time I got over there again, it was 1130. I was cold. I was tired. So we backed it up for the night and figured we can hit it today. Plus this side is a lot wetter than that side. So that tilled up actually really well. You can kind of see right there on the ridge. It's a little bit more wet or not on the ridge, but kind of in the valley there. It's a little bit more wet. This is just wetter in general. Um, so yeah, we're hoping to get things in, um, Sunday, if not Monday. Up. Got it greased. Uh, we're gonna go cut those 
two little spots real quick and then we'll be take your fertilizer buggy back probably drop the hay bind off at the cows current plan is to get one of those pastures cut um, hopefully that'll give us a little bit more hay um, but we'll, we'll get that knocked out mm -hmm. 